always used to believe that Addis Ababa is the best capital to work and live in East Africa. That was, however, before I had to leave the country overnight due to a devastating genocidal war that broke out in 2020 and before my first visit to Nairobi. And I already shared in my last episode that I am a big fan of Nairobi and I took my time to deeply reflect again on the pros and cons of living in both cities and I want to share my results with you. Before I start, let me make one thing clear. I am not talking about a visit. When it comes to visiting, you should definitely visit both cities because they are both beautiful, vibrant and unique in their own way. What I will be focusing on today is what it actually means to work and live in the city. And to determine this, I chose seven criteria which are important to me from the perspective of a diaspora. And these seven criteria are one, housing and transportation, two, peace and stability, three, food, number four, entertainment and nightlife, number five, the natural environment and weather, number six, we will look at the spirituality and energy of those places, and number seven, the last criteria will be about business baby. And you should know me by now, whenever I travel or visit new places, in Africa, I look at the business opportunities. So if you're new to this channel, welcome, karibu and salam. My name is Wayne. I have a background in cultural anthropology and African studies. And in this channel, I teach about the different business opportunities that are available on the African continent. And I also seek to educate because I feel like we Africans, we know much, much more about what is going on in Europe or in America than what is going on in our neighboring African countries. And I believe that is definitely by design because how else do you explain that a ticket from Addis Ababa to Nairobi costs almost as much as a ticket from Europe to Nairobi? So that prevents us from visiting each other, from getting to know each other and from learning from each other. So without any delay, let's get into it. The first thing I have to say that both cities share a lot of similarities. One is, for instance, that both cities are located on a very high altitude. Nairobi is located on an altitude of 1,700 meters above sea level, while Addis is even located a bit higher on around 2,000 meters above sea level. So don't be surprised when you will have difficulties of catching a breath because the air is very thin up there. And also I love the mild climate that comes with the high altitude, which is why I generally prefer to settle in the Rift Valley. Another similarity that both cities share is that they are home to many headquarters of international organizations and institutions. Like for instance, the headquarter office for Africa of the United Nations, one of the four headquarters worldwide, is located in Nairobi. While Addis Ababa is home to the African Union, which is the center of African politics and relations. And so some friends of mine and people in my circle who want to pursue a career in the field of developmental aid and international relations and politics ask me, Wayne, which city is actually more fun and more convenient to live in? Where should I apply? Should I apply for a job in Nairobi or even just for an internship? I get this question asked repeatedly or if I would recommend Addis Ababa. So let's look at the first criteria housing and transportation. On my last visit in Nairobi, I was looking for a house because I wanted to create a new home base for myself. And what I saw there really blew my mind. First of all, I was surprised that so many condos and houses have swimming pools. That is almost impossible to find in Addis Ababa. And I love to swim, that's why that's a big plus for me. What also amazed me was to see that a lot of apartments and houses still have those old wooden rustique floors. And I love that. And just in general, I found that construction works and finishing are on a much, much higher standard in Nairobi than in Addis Ababa. So 
If you look at this one bedroom studio, for instance, it's located in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Nairobi, very close to the UN headquarters. This studio would have cost me around 50,000 Kenyan shilling, which is around 400 US dollar. And I have access to a beautiful swimming pool, I have access to a spa and a sauna, and it is a very safe and green area. When I look what I can get for 400, 500 US dollar in Addis Ababa, you will pay double as much to get the same standard. And even then, you will most probably not have access to a swimming pool. I feel like the cost of living in Addis Ababa is one of the highest that I've ever experienced in the world. And I've visited and traveled many countries. And it looks similar when it comes to transportation. A car in Ethiopia in Addis Ababa cost a fortune. Like for instance, a second-hand Toyota Vitz cost almost 10,000 US dollar in Ethiopia. Do you know what you can get for 5,000, 4,000 in Kenya? And so, also when it comes to the Uber system, I feel like it works definitely much, much more better and smooth in Nairobi than in Addis, which is also definitely a result of the stable Wi-Fi connection and internet connection in Nairobi and the much better established address system. So definitely Nairobi wins the first one. So let's look at the second criteria, peace and stability. Very, very important for me and for many diaspora out there who come back to the motherland to seek peace. And let me make it short, Nairobi wins this round as well because as I have mentioned in the very beginning of this video, peace and stability issue was the reason I left Addis Ababa and Ethiopia in the first place. And guess where I found my peace? In Tanzania and Kenya. So yeah, you might say, okay, Wayne, you are Ethiopian, you are implicated in the conflict and you are biased which I am, I don't make uh, a secret out of it. Oh. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. Uh, and so as long as I'm as a foreigner, as long as it doesn't affect me, I'm cool. Well, I have some bad news for you. The war will affect you. Even if the war and conflict is far, far away, you will be affected even in Addis Ababa because inflation is crazy crime rate is going up prices are up and yeah i just don't know it doesn't resonate with me i felt like i'm having a hard time enjoying myself and being at peace with myself knowing that not far away people are starving to death and so i acknowledge the problems of nairobi and kenya of course there is poverty in nairobi and as we know, one of the biggest, if not the biggest slum in Africa is located in Nairobi. But it is in no way comparable to the suffering that we are seeing in Ethiopia and in Addis Ababa at the moment. And so, you know, before I first visited Nairobi, people were warning me and telling me, you know, Nairobi is called Nairobi for a reason, so you have to be very careful. But I must say, I've never felt so safe. I don't know if it is because of M-Pesa. Thanks for clarifying that it is pronounced M-Pesa. Asante sana, each one teach one. Um, but yeah, because I didn't have to carry cash with me, it gave me a sense of comfort and security that I miss in other African countries. And so Nairobi, I didn't see anything of that. You liar to me, <laughs> you liar to me, oh my God. So if anyone ever warns you and tells you don't go to Nairobi, tell them to shut up and just make your own experience. And okay, you can also say, ah, uh, you've been lucky. When you go to this and this area, then you're gonna find out. But let me tell you something. I don't go to these areas in the first place. Like, for what? Second, I'm always blessed and protected and I give thanks and praise for that. And I believe that when you come to a place with good energy and an open heart and open mind, you will attract open hearts and open minds and good souls. Now, let's get to the third criteria, food. So this is a difficult one, let me tell you why. Unlike most Habeshas, I am a lover of seafood. I love 
prawns, I love octopus, pueza, I love lobster. And to find good seafood in Addis Ababa is almost a mission impossible. You cannot even find decent fish. But I must also say injera is life. Injera is the most healthiest food that exists out there. There was even once a lawsuit between a Dutch company and the Ethiopian government because the Dutch company put a patent on F, which is the name of the grain from which injera is made of, the smallest grain in the world, and they claimed exclusive distribution rights on F for themselves. Can you imagine that? That is absolutely wicked, especially when you consider that F is a grain that has been harvested in East Africa for thousands of years. So luckily they lost this lawsuit and um, yeah, injera is just, in my opinion, one of the most healthiest and delicious food in the world and therefore this round goes to Addis Ababa. What I also love about injera and Ethiopian food is the way we eat food. Like we literally feed each other and I feel that food that you eat with your hands tastes much better than food that you eat with a fork or a spoon and besides that it's a love language like when we feed somebody, it's an expression of appreciation and of love and respect. And so that's another reason why Addis Ababa wins this round. So you will definitely enjoy food much, much more in Addis than in Nairobi, in my opinion. And I know there are also Ethiopian restaurants in Nairobi, but it is not the same. Now let's look at the next criteria. Criteria number four entertainment and nightlife so while Nairobi has a lot of amazing rooftop bars with services that you can barely find in Addis Ababa I feel like that the energy and the vibe in Addis is much much more better Addis Ababa has in my opinion much more to offer when it comes to live music and I love live music I'm not such a big fan of clubs anyway so if you want to enjoy some nice live music you should definitely check out the African Jazz Village in Addis and Gion Hotel and the Fendika Cultural Center of course in my opinion the most authentic place to learn about Ethiopian cultural dances and music and um, the vibe is just on another level and besides that I had the best party of my life in Addis Ababa that was a few years ago during the festival of Ashenda Ashenda is actually an orthodox three day long holiday where we celebrate the ascendance of Mother Mary to heaven and this tradition and festival comes originally from the Tigray region but is today a shared heritage and shared among other ethnicities in Ethiopia as well. But however, the best celebrations, they are definitely in Mekele, in the capital of the Tigray region, but the one in Addis comes really, really close. So I went to this um, Ashenda festival in 2019 and what I experienced there really shocked me. I had a literal cultural shock. So during the three-day Ashenda celebration, it is all about us, the women. We celebrate our strength, our fertility, our beauty, our femininity. And I was told in these three days, women and girls are allowed to do whatever they want. They can sing and dance, they can stay out as long as they want and just enjoy themselves. And so the ladies and the girls really take their time to get ready. They get their hair done in a beautiful traditional way. They wear their most beautiful dresses and then they go out and sing and dance. And it's just so beautiful. And the celebration in Addis Ababa was just insane. It was hosted in the Millennium Hall and you have no idea. There were 20,000 women one more beautiful than the other. Men are not allowed. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Sh I'm saying. The tickets for men are very, very limited. And I really couldn't stop laughing on my way to the Millennium Hall. And the entire area is gated to keep away men that were desperately trying to enter the Millennium Hall. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was so funny and then inside of this millennium hall there were many live acts and and artists performing on stage the women were dancing and enjoying themselves without a single drop of alcohol so much joy so much laughter just embracing your cultural heritage I loved to see that that was the party of my life and I can't wait to go and witness the big Ashenda celebration in Tigray one day. May peace return to the people of Tigray soon. Say Amen. So this round definitely goes to Addis Ababa. So let's get to the next criteria. Criteria number five, natural environment and weather. And so, as I said also, both cities share a similar mild climate, but I have to say that Nairobi is a little bit more warmer. Like you never want to experience rainy season in Addis Ababa. Some neighborhoods will be even covered in snow. Yes, you hear me right. It snows in Africa. How? Hold on, bro. How? And Addis Ababa is, in comparison to Nairobi, a concrete jungle. Sometimes I felt like I need to get out of here before I lose my mind. And because of the peace and stability issues, you cannot just visit any region that you want to take a time out so I just packed my bags and grabbed my kids and we took a trip to Mombasa which cost us a fortune because flights from Addis to Kenya are sadly almost double as much as tickets from Europe to Mombasa but anyway we took this trip imagine if you live in Nairobi you can reach Mombasa within five hours by train and enjoy the beautiful Indian Ocean or the African Ocean we should actually call it and so really really loved how green Nairobi was and it was named the green city in the sun for a reason which is also by the way a big legacy of the great Wangari Maathai. Wangari Maathai was a Kenyan environmental activist that founded the Green Belt Movement and that was the first black African woman to get awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. That was in 2004. With her Green Belt Movement, Wangari Maathai has managed to plant more than 30 billion trees by the beginning of the 21st century and inspired many other African nations to join the movements. So I believe it's very important that we recognize, acknowledge, appreciate her work and remember her for the great woman and leader that she was. And we have to teach the youth and our people about her legacy. I'm so grateful for this green legacy that she left behind. That is a big blessing and gift for generations to come. The Ethiopian Nobel Peace Prize winner, on the other hand, will leave a legacy that will haunt Ethiopians for generations. And so this round definitely goes to Nairobi. Now let's look at the next criteria. Criteria number six, energy and spirituality. And I must say, I feel much, much more rooted, grounded and connected when I'm in Addis Ababa than when I was in Nairobi and I don't know what it is but I feel that Addis Ababa is a much much more spiritual place than Nairobi of course it is always difficult to describe a feeling you must experience it yourself maybe it is because Nairobi is much much more modernized and thereby also more westernized than Addis Ababa maybe it is the soothing sound of morning prayers that you wake up to when you live in Addis Ababa, uh, which I really, really miss so dearly. I loved waking up to the morning prayer of the Keshi, the priest. Uh, of course, there was also a lot of mosques, so it doesn't matter where you live, you will always have a church or a mosque nearby. And the way they sing, the way they pray in the morning is so beautiful in Ethiopia. I felt like it was calming me down and I felt closer to God and as I said more grounded and connected and therefore I would say this round goes to Addis Ababa. Now let's get to the last and determining criteria. Criteria number seven, business opportunities. So Addis Ababa 
has a much bigger population than Nairobi. And in general, Ethiopia is a much bigger economy than Kenya. Ethiopia is the second most populous country after Nigeria. And so definitely the opportunities in Ethiopia are immense. However, without peace and stability, how can you invest? Like in these two years alone that I lived in Addis Ababa, I experienced two internet and telecommunication blackouts. And for somebody who works in the e-commerce sector like me, Having access to Wi-Fi and internet is key. I was really struggling. The first internet blackout that I experienced went two weeks long and the second one even a month long. And as far as I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, businesses made a loss in revenue of 5 million US dollars per day during this internet and communication blackout. And by the way, the longest uninterrupted internet and telecommunication blackout in history, in the world, happened in Ethiopia, in the Tigray region to be more precise, and went more than two years long, longer than the one in the Kashmir region. And so I don't know if it's a good idea to invest in a country where the government loves to weaponize the internet, because when you are running an e-commerce business and you depend on internet, good luck in Ethiopia. They can just switch it off and you're done, you're basically done. And Kenya, on the other hand, has a much, much better internet connectivity. But besides that, I feel that private property is much, much more valued in Kenya than it is in Ethiopia. Like I've talked to a lot of Caribbeans and Rastafaris who came to Ethiopia to invest. Some of them settled in Shashamane, some in other cities of the country and some in Addis Ababa and what really stick with me was that even though they are living there for two decades even though their children were born there even though they were running successful businesses they were struggling to get a residency struggling to get their ownership certificates for their businesses and properties and during the riots that happened in 2020 Many businesses got burned down. A lot of Rastas left the country, moved to other countries in Africa like Ghana, Tanzania and Kenya. I think it's a very high risk country and therefore Nairobi wins this round and is the overall winner of this challenge. Congratulations Nairobi. You know already I am a big fan of you. If you don't know by now, go check out my last episode where I speak about the Nairobi they don't show you on TV and so I had a beautiful experience there I can't wait to make Nairobi my home haters gonna hate and will say she's bashing her own country she's trying to destabilize Ethiopia I'm here to tell you right now we don't care let me tell, right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care this was just my opinion let me know what you think in the comments let's learn from each other share our experiences remember each one teach one i hope you enjoyed this episode if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet do so please and hit the notification bell to be always up to date because i'm going to drop some new gems soon and you don't want to miss that because in my next episode i'm going to show you step by step how to start your own airbnb business on the african continent and create your own home base without owning a property so see you next week bye